So it's Charles McCall again, and the sun is rising in Kampong Cham, and as you can hear, the streets are getting busier. I'm sitting at a coffee shop uh, on the banks of the Mekong River. We're studying First Timothy together, and so far I haven't made it near as far as I have intended to make in what's supposed to be like a five-minute word of encouragement and exhortation. But we're in First Timothy chapter 1, and we're ta we've talked about the law last time and so Paul says that we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous person but for the lawless and the insubordinate very important point here the law is made for lawless people because mankind has a problem mankind has a sin problem there's something on the inside of us that causes us to want to do wrong, that causes us to want to do something that is not right, that is unjust, that is unfair, that is morally wrong. And so this is a force that is working in every man, woman, and child that is born on the face of this earth since the time after Adam and Eve, when sin, when they sin and they pass that nature of sin onto their children. And so God gives us parameters in order to protect society, in order for us to have success. God does not give us the law to punish us because he's a bad God and he's gonna teach us a lesson. No, God gives us the law to protect us as guidelines for success. If we follow the laws of God and don't cross over and violate them, well then we're gonna have success in life. And so the law is not made for righteous people. The law is made for bad people. If you're a good person, you know, if you're a person that drives the speed limit, you don't have to worry about the state police that's sitting up the highway or the county sheriff or the local police that's standing on the corner. If you're in Cambodia and, and uh, if you're wearing your motorcycle and you have a proper driver's license and your motorcycle uh, is, is licensed properly and you see a police uh, inspection up, uh, up ahead, you usually don't have anything to worry about because you have everything in order. But it's the guy who's breaking the law, the dishonest person, the deceitful person, the person that is, is insubordinate, doesn't like to follow uh, the way of society, that person has something to be concerned about. And so, but the law has a purpose. And there's a, a verse in the book of Galatians that says the law is a tutor to lead us to Christ. And so the purpose of the law is to, and also says in Romans chapter 7, the, the law brings the knowledge of sin. And so Paul said, I wouldn't have known that it was wrong to covet unless the law said, the Ten Commandments said, you shall not covet. But when I recognized that, I discovered, wow, there's all kinds of covetousness inside of me. And so the law is used to reveal sin so we can see that we're helpless, we need a savior, and to lead us to Jesus, who is the answer to the problem of sin. And so we use the law in our teaching, in our preaching, in our relationships, particularly with, with unbelievers, to reveal sin in their lives. And I'm thinking of the, the Peter sermon on the day of Pentecost, where he preached, and he's uh, and he specifically pointed to the uh, the Jews, and he said, "You killed the Lord of Glory. You guys are guilty. You killed the Son of God, the one that came from heaven, the Messiah." And their response was, oh man, when you say that, Peter, you make us feel bad. We're kind of feeling bad in our heart. What, what can we do about this? And then he led them to Jesus, who is the answer. That is the purpose of the law. We use the law, the Ten Commandments. You shall not kill, you should not steal. And if you're in Cambodia, you can use Buddha's law as well, because it's very similar. And so, or you can use the, the law of the God of the universe. But the purpose of the law, we can use it in evangelism. We can use it to lead people to Christ because it brings, when we discover that we fail to keep the law, it's not to, for us to live under condemnation forever, but for us to come to an end to ourselves and realize, man, I can try, try, try. I can, I can offer sacrifices. I can fast. I can pray. I can give. I can do all these things, but I still have this bad tendency to do wrong, to break God's commandments in my life. What can I do about this? And the answer is, in, in Romans chapter 7, is that what a wretched man I am. Who will deliver me from this law of sin and death on the inside of me? Well, it's not what, but who. 
that is Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and our punishment and so we have freedom and we have a power through the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, the next chapter, deals with uh, the power that God gives us to fulfill the law, to do what is right. We now have a power beyond ourselves. And so Paul's talking about the law here, and he said the law is not for the righteous person. It's not to condemn the, the person that does good. It's for the ungodly, for the sinners, for the unholy, profane, for murderers, for fathers, murderers of mothers, manslayers, fornicators, the sodomites, homosexuals, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers. Now, if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which is committed to my trust. And so we use the law in our preaching, and we ask, so how are you doing with lying? How are you doing with taking that which doesn't belong to you, such as time, such as items, how are you doing with worshiping other gods? How are you doing with the, uh, the, the Sabbath of, of making time for God? And so the, the purpose is to bring guilt, to bring what the Bible calls conviction. We Christians call conviction, something that is twinging in our conscience to let us know that we've done wrong. But the answer is to lead the person to Jesus. Jesus is the one who died for our punishment and he also can give us new life through the power of his Holy Spirit. And so there's a purpose for the Ten Commandments. There's a purpose for the moral law of God uh, for us Christians. And it's to help lead us and unbelievers to Jesus.